the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God verse 17 and he shall go before him and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord you understand this is a fulfillment of Malachi chapter number 4 verse 6 God said he would send Elias and he would turn the hearts of the children, fathers to the children and from the children to the fathers, lest the Lord come and smite the earth with a curse. We see the fulfillment through John the Baptist operating in the spirit and power of Elijah. You understand? Elias is Latin for the prophet Elijah. I mean, the prophet Elijah. Here. So that's what's going on. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am old. I, I mean, where, he said, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. Verse 19. And the angel answering, saying unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee. And to show the and to show thee these glad tidings, verse twenty, and behold thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. Do you understand? This is serious business. A chastisement and a correction came to Zacharias for not believing. Do you understand? There's a punishment coming to the people who hear and know the truth about what Christ, the birth of Christ, is all about. It has nothing to do with Christmas. It has nothing to do with Christ's mass, which was created by a group of people who, in fact, are crucifying Christ every single day with their actions. You understand what I'm saying? This ain't no Christmas. This is the birth of the Messiah that we are celebrating. And we're celebrating it not by going broke or getting our credit card stolen at Target or Home Depot. No, we are celebrating it by giving glory to God, by proclaiming the truth of the word of God in hopes that people everywhere will repent and that Christians will begin to celebrate the birth of Christ and come out of the world. And then God's power, his miracle work and power will be manifest when we humble ourselves and repent before God. Amen? You would see more of it if more people would step up. But I've talked to people and I don't know how many people if any are willing to change from their traditions. But I'm going to believe there's a remnant of people on this earth that know exactly what I'm talking about. And if the Lord allows us to post it on the YouTube, hopefully somebody will hear this sermon and say somebody finally has gotten it. You understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes people won't move until they see other people moving. When they see other people taking a stand, then maybe it'll become important to the body of Christ to begin to serve God and worship him in spirit and in truth. Verse 21, and the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me. In the days wherein he talked, uh, he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David 
and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Verse 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Verse 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. There will be no end to the kingdom of God. Verse 34, then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? That's a legitimate question. Verse 35, And the angel answered and said, Under her the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she have also conceived the son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Verse 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Say that with me. For with God nothing shall be impossible. All things are possible when you're dealing with a God that cannot fail, that cannot lie, that cannot change, that will, cannot alter his word. Amen. God said the word that comes out of his mouth shall not return unto him void, but he shall accomplish everything that he please. And when God sent the message through the angel, every word that was spoken came to pass, and the virgin conceived. Not only did the barren Elizabeth conceive, but the virgin Mary conceived in her womb and gave birth to Jesus. Let's listen to her rejoice when she got the news. She praised God in advance of everything happening. Check this out. Verse 38 And Mary said, Behold the, the handmaid of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word and the angel departed from her. Notice Mary had a different reaction from Zacharias and there was no punishment given. Mary said be it and let it be according to thy word. Behold the handmaid of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word. Amen. And Mary arose in those days. Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And who's, and what is this to me? That the mother of my Lord should come to me, for lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Verse 45, and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of, these, of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. 
and my spirit have rejoiced in God my Savior, for he have regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty have done to me great things. And holy is his name, verse 50, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength for, with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of the hearts. He has put down the mighty from, he has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. God is awesome, as I told you. He had put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He had filled the hungry with good things and the rich he had sent empty away. He had hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers to Abraham and to his seed forever and Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house now Elizabeth full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son and her neighbor and her cousins let me turn the page and her neighbor and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her and they rejoiced with her and it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father we know that wasn't the right move, because watch this, verse 60. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. See, people don't want to break their traditions. But verse 62, And they made signs to his father, how he would have him called. See, they want to cause division in between husband and wife right here. Verse 63, and he asked for a writing table and wrote saying, his name is John. And they marveled all. Verse 64, and his mouth was open immediately and his tongue loosed and he spake and praised God. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea, verse 66. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was upon was with him. We'll pick up the rest of this story next week, Lord willing, starting at verse 67, because this is powerful stuff. As we saw, once Zechariah said his name was John, the, his tongue was loosed and he was able to speak and he's going to praise God so he didn't get angry and become bitter, even though he was corrected. He gave God the glory. And when people start trying to cause the vision in a home, when a husband and wife get on the same page, there is power. Just like there's power when there's when you're in agreement with God's word, there is power. What did the Bible say? That two shall become one flesh. Amen? So nobody can come in between that. What God has joined together, let no man put us under. That is how we're going to keep marriages intact. Not trying to condemn people who have been 
getting divorced. We want to prevent divorce from happening by getting the homes where the mom, where the husband and wife are on the same page, where nobody's more superior than the other, but both of us are walking in the fear and admonition of the Lord, and God sees us as a team. God saw Elizabeth and Zacharias as a team. He saw Mary and Joseph as a team. Joseph had nothing to do with the birth of Christ. For the birth of Christ was supernaturally performed by God by allowing the Holy Ghost to overshadow Mary, to come upon her, and the power of the highest, meaning Jehovah God, overshadowed her and she conceived. You understand? Joseph was a stepfather. He was not the biological father of Jesus Christ. And next week, we'll, if, if we get there, we'll get into some verses that were twisted by other Bibles, mm -hmm. but the truth is right here. Mm -hmm. And we can know the truth, and the truth can make us free. I thank God for the pleasure of being able to preach his word, to be able to start something so exciting. And when you see the truth about the birth of Christ, you won't want anything to do with this Christmas stuff that's going on. Yeah. Even though you know family members are going to be trying to push it on you, you can say, we know that Jesus Christ was not born in December. We can say that we know that Jesus Christ is not glorified with all these people contemplating, oh, what gift can I get them, and what gift can I get them, and you got uncertainty, then you got people taking gifts back. All of this stuff has nothing to do with Christ. Mm -mm. I don't have to wait till December mm -hmm. to get my kids things they need. As God empowers me financially, I can give it to them. I don't have to wrap it up. I don't have to put it under a tree. Praise the Lord. Ain't no tree in here. Okay. You understand? The cross of Jesus Christ is in our hearts. The tree that on Calvary where he would die and rose again is in our hearts. We don't need no evergreen tree that people use to worship Baal and worship Nimrod. We don't need that junk in our house and our house will be blessed for not having it. Amen. Amen. We're celebrating the birth of our Lord and we'll do it by giving honor and paying respect to the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and giver of the Holy Ghost, the Trinity, the Holy Godhead, according to the scriptures, the three-in-one triune God that no other God can touch and no other God can match. Amen? No other God is like our God. There's no God like Jehovah. Let's give God the glory. And this is not a cult. Let me tell you, this is not a cult called the Jehovah's Witnesses. They are a cult. These are true Christians that understand that Jesus was born and we're not in a cult. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So stay away from the cults that come knocking on your door with Watchtower magazines. Stay away from that. Get into the true Bible, the King James Bible. Get into the truth for who Jesus is, the Messiah. He is divine. He's not only the Son of God, He is God manifest in the flesh, and He is God the Son. We believe in the deity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. That makes them a cult. The anti-Trinitarians do not believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost being three and one, being the Godhead, they are a cult. There are many churches that claim to believe the truth, but they're celebrating the pagan practices of the world. They are a cult. You know, there may be people that love Jesus that happen to be in these churches that may go to heaven based on their relationship with Jesus. But I'm telling you, many of these people are not going into heaven because their traditions are more important to them and they won't stop celebrating the pagan holidays that they're celebrating not even to save their own soul isn't that a shame isn't that a shame stand strong and say we believe that Jesus Christ his birth his death his burial and his resurrection 
is one thing that we believe in. We don't need a holiday. What we need to do is humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt us in due time.